Welcome into this Monday edition of the Oxford Exxon podcast. The uh, camera's messed up, I'm assuming, but we're here with you on this uh, Monday afternoon, a little early, but I see people got the notifications starting to uh, fill in here with us via social media, or if you just uh, knew from you, knew from YouTube that you were uh, we were headed your way, we will uh, talk some basketball today. Ole Miss losing to Mississippi State Saturday night in uh, – <clears throat> in Oxford, sorry, um, got distracted by our own video there for a second. Anyway, as well as a good bit of baseball today on and off the field. Ole Miss 2-0 and so far in Arlington, Texas, as the uh, the Rebels knock off TCU on Saturday 7-3. to They beat the Texas Tech Red Raiders in a bit of a nail-biter last night, 5-4 to to move to 2-0 and on the season. They play Texas around 2.30, 2.45, 3 o'clock, something like that. So, obviously, we're not going to focus on that game at all because it will be over by the time it gets in podcast form or at least uh, at least close to it there. So, we'll uh, we'll talk a little more things about baseball. Again, different things as the week moves on. Ole Miss, number one in the country per Baseball America. Other polls coming out tomorrow. Baseball America, the only major poll that went ahead and put out their uh, their top 25 prior to all the games being played. So that's kind of the setup, that, and uh, more coming up on the show, brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon. Highway 6 West in Oxford. Go download the Speed Pass Plus app. Let them take care of you. You pay right there at the pump. You earn points, and when you earn points, you save money with all Blue Sky locations in Mississippi. And then here locally at the Oxford Exxon, you get the lunch special for five sixty nine, two sides of bread, 32-ounce drink, as well as getting anything from the hot case, barbecue kit, barbecue, chicken, side items, and more. And again, we are uh, back together and coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. Yep, Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Call it. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Just right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. You get your quote, and the rest is completely up to you. You can shop it around. But you can do what I've done. Let's hop into a Clark Ford today. You'll love the service. You'll love the product. Uh, everything about dealing with Clark Ford is fantastic, and you'll see that yourself when you make that call, 662-257-1900. Guests will join us this week on the Rafters Music and Food Hotline. Rafters will be a uh, great place this week, this weekend, to uh, hang out, get a great meal, enjoy a uh, full bar, drink specials, beer selection, the whole deal. There at Rafters, you can watch Ole Miss basketball Tuesday night at Missouri, uh, Saturday uh, at Vanderbilt, I think. And then, uh, pretty sure that's right. And then um, Ole Miss baseball, of course, this weekend as well. One of the things we'll be talking about in a minute is an ideal world. More of you could get into Swayze. It's not yet an ideal world. So uh, you can watch those games there at uh, Rafters, music and food on the square in Oxford and also in New Albany. Yes, at Vanderbilt, that is a uh, 2.30 start, I assume. Mm-hmm. Um, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. Okay. So Missouri, 8 o'clock on uh, the 23rd, Tuesday night for uh, for that one from Columbia. Um, so, anyway, Missouri is still that one team where, my God, at the net and the RPI being so different. Net at 39, RPI at, uh, at 10. So, anyway. Yeah, I mean, if there was ever a must-win game for a basketball team. The next it, three are those. It is – the one tomorrow is a is a must win game, period. The end. And the next one. And, and, the, the next and one. then after that. And the next one. Well, if the, <laughs> you, uh, frankly, if you lose to Missouri, the next two aren't must win games. Yeah. Because at that point, nothing matters unless you go win the tournament. That's mm-hmm. where we are. If you beat Missouri, then Vanderbilt becomes a must win game. What odds think. would I have to give you for you to pick Kentucky to win the tournament? They're playing better all of a sudden. They've got wins over better teams. I don't think they're going to, but if you told me they did something crazy, I wouldn't be stunned. Kentucky, yeah, uh, they played really well. I watched them against Tennessee. Um, yeah, they're 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 yeah. yeah, they're coming together. They're playing better lately. They're probably the second hottest team in the league right now. It's been on Alabama because Alabama's Alabama. Well, right. I mean Arkansas, oh, Arkansas won Arkansas, seven right. in a row. That's right. Yeah, Although yeah. Alabama's been really good. Alabama's not playing great right now, though. They they had their hands full with Vanderbilt the other day. They're Alabama feels like – they remind me of an Auburn team that I covered that ended up being a one seed mm-hmm. that peaked in February. You knew. Eh. Kind of felt it ending. There were some moments there where you like, oh, boy, they might have hit their stride two weeks too early. Alabama feels like that a little bit to me. Did that Auburn team make the Sweet 16? It did make the Sweet 16. Lost to Ohio State in the Sweet 16. Pin? Scooney Pin, yeah. Michael Red. Yep. Thank the- God. I was ready to go home. 
I'm assuming Michael Red could shoot in college too, a little bit. He could. The game was in Knoxville. Uh, really? Yeah, I've never been happier to <laughs> uh, exit Thompson Bowling in my life. No offense to any Auburn fans who were watching, but it had been it had been a stay. I had been in Indianapolis. I had to room with a photographer who didn't sleep. What do you mean? He didn't sleep. Did he at least try, or was he just like uh, staying up with crazy hours? Just all hours, and then had to get in a car and drive to Blacksburg, Virginia, to cover a women's game. Barely made it, driving on ice, basically, down the mountains of West Virginia, and then drove to Knoxville just on fumes and was ready to go. Some of it, I get, is dependent on money and different things and whatnot, but there is a time in every, I'm sure every traveler, if you're doing anything for work in general, but especially for sports riders, journalists, whatever the hell you want to call us, where you no longer share rooms in, or at all. No matter what, that's over, and it's like, nope, I'm good. I need my own room. We're not we're not stockpiling into the son of a bitch anymore. When I left Birmingham to go to Mobile, that was one of my stipulations. Was it really? Yep. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, the photographer's not staying with me. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there is a point where that just becomes... Yeah. Well, because, I mean, I was... I mean, and in, in, in even when I was younger... Such different sleep schedules. I mean, I, I was worse about it then than I am now. I'm going to bed at 9.45, and I'm waking up at 4.45 in the morning. Everybody else my age is out till 3 a.m. and like yeah. whatever, and I'm like, shit, I, I, we're, we're, this is not a compatibility whatsoever at this point. So, anyway. Um, I'm getting the question a lot, how good is this baseball team? Um, I don't know. They're two games into a season. We knew they were good coming in. We knew they had everybody back. They're still good. They still have everybody back. But levels of good – in baseball, you don't know that through two games. You don't know that through two weeks. Um, they haven't been hitting the mouth yet. I still want to see this team, and what I've been saying all preseason, and it hasn't happened. Now, look, in game wise, they do a really good job with it. They don't give games away, but they haven't lost four out of six. They haven't lost that weekend where they just get the hell beat out of them. What happens? Because they play with extreme confidence. They have an edge about them. They have a swagger, if you want to use that word. They play like Vanderbilt and Louisville play. They do. That is what Ole Miss looks like. Fans hate them. They're cocky as all hell. But can you keep that up when it doesn't go right for you? Because, you know, what was good about that team last year was they were too young to know better. They just showed up. They've always won. They kept winning. And that's how they, they, they ran out the season prior to it getting canceled. And that's how they've started the season right now. But that's going to be the that's going to be the question. It's going to be in two ways. It's going to be one mentally when you just lose games and you don't kind of have that going for you, and then two. And Neil and I were talking about it on, on just on the phone this morning when a lot of these new guys have to deal with scouting reports. When when they go, you know, Jacob Gonzalez, they figure out, oh no, he's got a hole if you do this and you do this and you do this. And you know, I think Chatney probably avoided that. I think they've already is enough of a book on some of these sophomores like him and Dunhurst that they've gotten through that. But but what kind of happens? And I still think there's a little bit of that offensively. And it's an it's an offensive team that's going to score, but they're going to frustrate you guys at times too because they're so ex, you know they're so extra base dependent. Not in this park, but in general when they get back into a normal park, um, that some days the ball doesn't fly out of the yard and you strike out 15 times and you look like hell doing it. Um, and then other days you score 12 runs, 14 runs, and you move on. So there's still questions about this team. Um, you know it was big for the program today. It never happened in school history, but. It's also a bit of a cautionary tale. The last time Ole Miss is ranked top two in the country was 2008. Neil and I both covered that team for different publications. That 2008 team squeaked into the postseason as a three seed in the Miami Regional. They had to win two games in Hoover to even make the postseason. They Michael Guerrero hit a walk-off home run against Kentucky at like 2.25 in the morning or something. And that probably put them in the postseason at that point. Um, but So it's a, it's a, it's a deal, but... So far, RPI help, obviously, no matter what happens. Even the Big 12 kind of looks like they suck maybe at, at different spots. But great weekend for Ole Miss, good for the program. What it means to be determined, we'll figure it out as we go. So. Yeah, it's a two-game sample size. Yeah, you got, got to be super careful with the <laughs> two-game sample size. Yeah. You'd rather be 2-0 and than 0-2. Oh You'd rather be 2-0 and than 1-1, one and one, obviously. You beat a top-10 team when your ace got pulled in the second inning. That's probably the best thing that's happened for Ole Miss to this point is sure. you showed some bullpen depth and you didn't freak the hell out at that point yeah. because a lot of teams would freak out at that point. They held on and won yesterday when it got a little squirrely late. We'll see. It's early. Yeah. There's reasons, lots of reasons for optimism and being ranked number one is good. It's yeah, big, I'm, I'm, big for your program. It's It makes people feel good. It's exciting. It leads me to the conversation we're going to have in a minute about 
where we are as kind of a society. And I mean, I haven't watched a lot of the tournament, but I've watched enough to see a couple of things. There's a lot of people in that lower deck. Yeah. I'm not trying to kill your buzz. Look, they could go 42 and 14. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, look, they're, they're going to host a regional. We're talking about a relative scale of how good this team is. It's not like, oh, they might suck. They don't suck. I mean, that's that we, we, we know that no, part. They're, they're upside. They're, they're ceiling, their upside's huge. Their ceiling is they could be a national championship team. Yeah. They're one of probably, I don't know, 16 teams in the country that probably can say that. It's probably high, but yeah, somewhere in that you know, realm. So that's, that's their – Baseball's a little different than most sports. Yeah. You can get hot and do stuff. You know. Because, I mean, hell, there's four or five in the SEC that if you said, hey, they won the national title, I'm not blown away and shocked. Of course. No, if I told you that Vanderbilt won the national title, you're not shocked. I know Florida lost their opening series, but if I told you it can be okay. (laughs) Well, they're the other side of this. Like, it's it's a (laughs) three-game sample size. And anybody anybody would – we would question the the sanity of someone who goes, well, they're they're clearly not as good as we thought they were going to (laughs) be. Yeah. No, it's, it's February. Relax. Yeah. Ole Miss, State, and Arkansas. Off the top of my head, those are the five. Or if you said, hey, one of yeah. those teams wins the national title. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and then you mentioned LSU, who has a top five pick on their Friday night staff. Yeah. Here's what got me today. I told you I wanted to talk about it, so I'll get there. Sure. Got up this morning. I was already thinking about it. I didn't realize Ole Miss would be ranked number one, but I knew they'd be ranked really high. You wake up this morning, and Ole Miss is ranked number one in the country. They've just played two baseball games. They'll play another one today. By the time a lot of you hear this, they will have already played three baseball games. But the point will remain proven. Using Richard Cross, his – I don't have it in front of I'll me. I'll get it while you're talking. But Richard got up this morning. Richard's over there as part of the Ole Miss Radio Network. Uh, he saw it all firsthand in Arlington this Kellum, weekend. Kellum did basketball, so he went and did, did baseball. 13 they, hours ago. So they had 16,000-some-odd people go through the turnstiles in Arlington on – Saturday for the first day of games. They had more than 17,000 go through the turnstiles in Arlington yesterday for the second day of games. You better read it. Uh, in a second. I'll, okay. I'll get there. So if you had a ticket for a day, you could go to one game or three or two. Sure. You could do whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. But your, your ticket was for the day. So the first games each day started 11 o'clock. at 11 o'clock, and they ended. I would Three-ish. guess the Arkansas games have ended midnight-ish. Close, yeah. So you could have been in the ballpark for 13 hours. The ballpark has a roof on it. That means it's an indoor arena at that point, the way that I interpret things. If there's a roof over me, I interpret it as I'm inside. If there's a, not a roof over me, I interpret that as I'm outside. <laughs> I'm not a smart man, but those that is how I identify things. They had a roof on the entire time on Saturday cold. and Sunday. Which meant that those games, those six games, and by the time you hear this, eight to nine games, will have been played indoors. Sure. I know the capacity of that stadium is roughly 40,000. There aren't many people sitting in the upper decks, the best I can tell. Hardly anyone. Which means they're all in the lower decks. Which means they're not, quote, spaced. It's general admission. You can sit where you want. Yes. They're not roping off seats between people. So, yeah, uh, Oklahoma Rebel at the end says our game was packed yesterday at the end. Because Arkansas showed up. Because Arkansas, and who was Arkansas playing last night? Uh, TCU? TCU. Arkansas and TCU were waiting to play. No, Texas. Sorry, Texas. Arkansas Arkansas beat Texas 4-0. Arkansas and Texas were waiting to play, and so those two fan bases had arrived at their scheduled time, and the Ole Miss game was still getting finished. Yeah. So – they didn't go sit in the upper deck. Right. They came and sat in the lower deck. Yeah. My point is mask or no mask. I'm not getting into the mask thing right now. They're there. So I can't help but ask if it's safe, and obviously it is, for people to sit in the lower deck essentially shoulder to shoulder inside in Arlington, Texas. Why is it not safe for more than 25% capacity outdoors at Swayze Field, at Duty Noble, at 
whatever the name of the stadium is in Southern in, in Hattiesburg. I don't Pete know. Pete Taylor Park. I'm, yeah, Pete, Pete, Pete Taylor Park. I'm not trying to demean anyone. I just didn't know. <laughs> Why not? I mean, I, I think it's a valid question right now that needs to start being asked more than it's being asked. There's this acceptance of, well, that's just the way it is until, until when? I've been asking this for a while now. Until when? Because when this started almost a year ago, we're approaching fast the one-year anniversary of this. Mm -hmm. What was said was, well, we, we can't override the hospital systems. Everybody understood that. That doesn't appear to be a threat right now. No, those type of numbers are improving by the day, it appears. Yeah, I got, got, got a couple different things on it. Richard, by the way, was just r- quickly the verbatim thing he said yesterday that kind of spearheaded this. He, he at Tate Reeves, he said, Governor Tate Reeves, yesterday 16,908 people watched three college baseball games in Arlington, Texas. Today, 17,508 came through the gates at Globe Life Field. Everybody wore masks. It's time to lift the attendance restrictions in Mississippi. He did some hashtags. And he said, we have the best college baseball fans collectively on the planet. They deserve to see these incredible teams in person. We can be responsible, but the economic decline based on capacity restrictions in Oxford, Starkville, and Hattiesburg has to stop. It's uh, it's time. I got a couple thoughts on it. For, just so we don't get 30 seconds into this and go into a break quickly, I will tell you that the podcast is brought to you in part by Community Mortgage. That's Oxford, Memphis, Settle County, and Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing is done in Memphis. They're getting local underwriting and understand your market. A leader in condo financing, the float down option, and more. You can find Jason at 662-234-2704 or J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. We're also brought to you by Lamons Fine Jewelry in Oxford. They sponsor Chasing the Ring. We taped a uh, version of that on Saturday it's in this podcast feed. You can also catch it on our YouTube channel. Lamons is at 1126 North Lamar Boulevard in Oxford, serving the Oxford area for more than 73 years. They've got everything from engagement rings to wedding rings, fine jewelry, watches, pearls, children's jewelry, collectibles, everything that you could possibly want. They Not only do they have it, they're the gold standard in fine jewelry. There, It's a fantastic place you'll uh, – You'll love doing business with Alan King and the people there at Lamons. They're absolutely great. LamonsFindJewelry.com or call them at 662-234-2777. Also brought to you by Muddy Water Camo. Go to MuddyWaterOutdoors.com. Uh, buy one of the uh, Tri-Zone heated jackets or vest. Get another one for free. It goes right into your cart automatically once you uh, load the one that you're planning to purchase. The second one goes in for uh, no charge. Uh, go ahead and get a battery while you're there. The the uh, my charge portable batteries, buy one battery, and the second battery goes into your cart for free. Uh, three different temperature settings, low, medium, high, triple zone heating with two elements in the chest, large back element as well. If you're going duck hunting, uh, that kind of thing would be perfect for that. If you're just out on one of these cold evenings, hopefully getting to watch a game at, uh, at Swayze when the sun goes down on a Saturday, Friday night, or a Saturday late afternoon, be glad you had one of these jackets from Muddy Water Outdoors, uh, Muddy Water Camo, MuddyWaterOutdoors.com. Also brought to you by Comer Heating and Air. They're the name you can trust with more than 50 years of professional HVAC experience, Oxford, Tupelo, and the surrounding area. Uh, get in touch with them. Make sure that your heating and cooling systems are running in tip-top shape. We're getting ready to do that deal where it, you're rotating heaters and uh, air conditioners and stuff as we do in the South, and it's coming. So you want to make sure that your systems are ready to go. 662-801-1777 for all your heating and cooling needs. And we're brought to you by the College Corner, your one-stop rebel shop, two locations in the Jackson area in Ridgeland. It's next to Fleet Feet and Flowood. It's next to Half Shell. If you don't live in Jackson, it's not a problem. Go to collegecornerstore.com. You can find them also on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, the College Corner has you covered for game day, the largest selection of rebel gear in central Mississippi. Podcast also brought to you by Visit Oxford. Visit OxfordMS.com. Click the, click the events page. See what all's going on locally every day, as well as where to eat, where to stay, what to do, and see, and more. So you can find that information again. Visit OxfordMS.com slash events. Yeah, I, look, Ole Miss is going to play no matter what happens today because they're already won the weekend and poll dynamics say it's going to be this way no matter what. They're going to play a game on Wednesday afternoon. By the way, Arkansas State game moved to 4 o'clock on Wednesday from Tuesday. I expect Drew McDaniel to start the game for Ole Miss pitching. Uh, they're going to play UCF Friday, Saturday, Sunday with a number one by their name for the first time in school history. Mm-hmm. 
don't you think that if you had full capacity, weather looks pretty good for the most part, things warming up after all the snow and the ice and everything, that it would frankly be a bit of a zoo on Friday and especially Saturday in Oxford for uh, for, for the home opener or yeah. for that. I'm pulling up the weather. extended forecast out to the week. High of 55 on Friday, 50% chance of rain, low of 38. High of 56 on Saturday, high of 56 on Sunday. Lows in the 30s, so cool, brisk, glad to have the jacket. But yeah, it'd be, uh, be pretty packed at, uh, at Swayze. It'd be a lot of people that would be there, a lot of excitement. Because um, here's what's happened is... On a on a perfect, hey, pack it in as much as you can, standing room only, whatever. Ole Miss can put twelve thousand ish on in, inside the stadium when you count everywhere. Somewhere around twelve, something like that. Okay. Especially ten five. Well, because of these rules, twenty five percent attendance at, at, at outside events in Mississippi. I think it's also an SEC rule as well. Um I was looking that up this morning and I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. It's it's a state it's a state mandate and a and a league mandate. Well, but you gotta go by official seated capacity, if that makes sense for mm-hmm. this. So it's not even 12,000, 25%. It's 8,800, 25%. So we're talking about 2,200 people for Ole Miss's home opener for their first weekend against UCF on Friday and Saturday. That includes whatever you put in the outfield, right? That is my interpretation okay. of this. Is Yeah, yeah, because there's – if I'm right on this and if I'm not, I apologize, but I think it's like 6,000 actual seats or something like that, and then you've got all the different stuff that goes along with that. I think that's right. So 2,200 people in attendance on Friday. And that's – look, that's if everybody shows up that has tickets for those events. I mean, because – that's the other thing too. They made the season ticket holder do the half and half thing, and this is not that that part is not a shot at Ole Miss. You 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 do whatever you can. The rules are so crazy right now that you're doing the best you can. I get that, but not everybody's going to show up. Not every ticket's going to be exchanged. No. I mean, you you never get a hundred percent recycled ability there from those type of things. So you're talking nineteen hundred, two thousand, seventeen hundred, whatever the hell the number is. I don't know. Outdoors. In an event where the week before, like you said, they're in Arlington with seventeen thousand um, indoors. Yeah, it, it 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 defies logic on so many different levels, economically, um, safety wise, because there's been no proof of these mass spreads at outdoor events at all that I'm aware of, and I would think we would know it if there were. In fact, there's a study um, that came out over the course of the weekend that shows that not only has is there is there no proof of there's there's literally no proof of any sporting event. Being a spreader, right? Indoor, outdoor, either one. Yeah, gotcha. period. Um, because we've played now a season full of NFL games, college football games, um, almost an entire season of college basketball games. We're almost at the midway point of the of the NBA. Some of those arenas have a few fans; most don't. Sure. Um, but there's no so football's the best example. One of the best examples and I mentioned it on Twitter today is that the Super Bowl was 25 percent capacity. And everyone, not everyone, but a lot of the people that are the zero COVID people, oh, that's going to be a super spreader. Look at the parties afterwards when the Bucks won. Yeah, it's going to spike. You're going to see it. Well, not only has it not spiked, but the the COVID percentages in in Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa is, have fallen off a cliff. They've decreased. I think the number was thirty seven percent or twenty eight percent. It was some big number. I can't remember the exact number. I wish I had it in front of me, but I don't. Sure. But they didn't get the increase. And so my point about all of it is at some point you have to start saying, okay, we did this this way because of this. But now we're at a different place. And people can say that the economics don't matter. I disagree. I think the economics do matter. I think if you're a business owner in Oxford, if you're a business owner in Starkville, you know the kind of excitement that's around these teams. You know what happens in towns like Oxford over the course of a, a spring. Let's be real here. I mean, Oxford's a small town. We, it, it, it's not exactly just loaded with things to go do each weekend. I mean, there's stuff to do, but you understand my point. It, 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 the, the, there's not a ton of events that come here that aren't. So in the spring, it's... It's Ole Miss baseball. And they're it's, losing them by the day all the way around because there's a misconception in Oxford, and I've talked to multiple business owners. I've got friends that are multiple business owners here. 
that the fall is where all the money comes in. That's not true. Not the spring at all. has home baseball weekends. They have the Grove Bowl. They have graduation. They have double decker. Had double decker. Right. Yeah. In a normal year, they have all these things sure. where they frankly do better in the spring than they do in the fall, pending schedules and People, different things and what you're going on. Kids come up for academic visits. Sure. And a lot of times you plan those visits around a home baseball series so that you can kind of get a feel for something on the campus if you're trying to decide whether you like a school or not, that kind of thing. And here's the thing. We're talking about Arkansas State and UCF and all that matters, but they play Alabama at home in a few weeks. They play whatever. In June or in late May, they're going to have an NCAA regional in Oxford at Swayze Field. You're going to put 2200 in there? You're going to lose that amount of money? Are you going to defy what appears to be research and scientific proof that it's not doing anything for that at that point? And there's This is where I come in, Richard. For saying that, the way that he said it on, on Twitter today where he put, sent it at Tate Reeves. Yeah, yeah. Asking, because it's the question I ask people. It's why people say, why are you so frustrated? I'll tell you why I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because when I ask questions, I don't get anything resembling an answer. The answer, the question I have is why? Why 25%? Why 25%? Where did that number come from? What is the difference scientifically between 25% and 50%? What's the difference between 25% and 75%? What's the difference? How are you enforcing that? Why are you enforcing it? What are the numbers? What are the metrics that you look at to make change? And look, does the state have to change it before it matters? Yes. The state absolutely. I mean, Richard sent it to the right person. Tate Reeves signs the executive orders, and they go through the Secretary of State's office and the whole deal. I mean, I'm staring at them here because I was curious when the last one expires, but I'll find it during break. I haven't found it yet. Point being... That has to change. The conference has to change. But what's being done right now is nobody's pushing. Nobody's fighting for constituents. Um, this comes back, you know, Ole Miss, I feel certain that Keith Carter would, if the state in the league goes, hey, you can put 80% in, you can put 100, you can put 75, you can put 35, whatever the number is higher than the number is right now, I have certain he would do that immediately and they would sell the tickets and they would put operations in place to do that without notice. But – there's a little bit, and this, I think this is university as a whole. I'm not even putting this on Keith. I'm putting this more in the Lyceum. Yes. Is, it's not on Keith. No, it's not on Keith It's at in all. the chancellor's office. Is that there's a difference in reactivity and proactivity. And right now, there's no proactivity. There's no push publicly where somebody goes, hey, why are we not doing this? We've got the number one baseball team in the country. Why can't we fill the stands up? Hey, commissioner of the SEC. Hey, Tate Reeves. Hey, whatever. Can we look at this data? Can we talk about it? Can we do this? Can we do this? Do this? Do this? Instead, it's just quiet. Nobody rocks the boat. Nobody says anything. Nobody starts the conversation. So over weeks and weeks and weeks, the conversation never gets started. That's that, that's the frustration as this thing goes forward is there's no proactivity to even broach and make that side – not that really in that side, but make people who have set these policies in place have the conversation with you, approach it, and explain why we are where we are right now with and, it. And here's, in my opinion, why. Sure. I think – We've talked about this before. We have a tendency in our field to put way too much weight on Twitter. Twitter's not reality. Well, I think sometimes the people that make decisions look at Twitter and begin to view Twitter as reality. Which is amazing. But true. Yes. But because I'm amazing. reading I'm reading some of the responses to Richard's tweet. Yeah. Richard's tweet is not hyperbolic. It's not incendiary. It's pretty just straightforward. It was polite. Polite. It's fine, yeah. He says it's time to lift the attendance restrictions in Mississippi. Slim, a guy, I won't, I won't use names. One guy <laughs> responds, he goes, by the time you read this, a half million Americans and counting have died from COVID-19. Noting causes, nothing causes spikes in cases and deaths like large gatherings of people. We've seen this over and over and over. Catherine uh, Panel responds, I said I wouldn't use names, but I will use hers. <laughs> hmm, let's get more vaccinations under our belts. Just because they attended doesn't mean they didn't spread. Just because they attended doesn't mean they didn't spread. Despite the fact that there's evidence that people didn't spread it, they continue to come back and go, oh, they spread it. If you were there, you spread it. Keep in mind because clowns would not follow this another person. Keep in mind because clowns would not follow guidelines is why we are still here. I would brush up on my day job, which needs tons of work, which is his little slap at Richard. 
before I point out others' faults. And then he uses the clown face. The problem you've got is that if you do it, if let's say you're the chancellor of the University of Mississippi, sure, and you publicly begin to say, hey, we think it's time to open up. We think it's time to head in that direction. You're going to get attacked on social media. You're going to be called a murderer. You're going to be called a bigot, a racist, a misogynist. You're going to be accused of, of being um, having no empathy. You're going to be accused of only being only caring about money. You're going to be accused of not caring about people dying. You're going to be accused of all of those things. You're going to take a beating on social media. And not many people sign up for that. And so they don't do it. And so the calendar turns. And then the calendar turns. And so when you say, well, this is not at you. I mean, you plural. Say, well, by June, I, sh- I think by June it's going to be open. And if you never actually have the conversation... Well, I mean, what's so magical about the calendar turning to June? I've asked people, Chase, about August. I did this this morning with someone about August. About August instruction at the University of Mississippi. See, me being selfish, this is me digging around. My kids aren't going to Ole Miss. I'm not, it doesn't matter to me. But I asked around. I said, what's, what's going on? Well, professors are being told to prepare for in-person instruction. But they're being told also to be prepared to pivot to virtual. Virtual's become this easy cop-out answer because as long as you keep the virtual carrot out there, it silences the, the critics. If you were to come out today and say, at Ole Miss, hear me out real quick. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You were to come out today and say, here's the deal. The numbers are, are the uh, cases are declining. Uh vaccinations are, are, are ongoing. People are being vaccinated at a, at, a, at a quick rate. This is a a disease that does not appear, obviously, after a year. It's pretty obvious it does not affect college-age kids. Sure. They don't get sick and die. Don't give me the anecdotes. Give me the stats. And here's what we're doing. In August, we're going, to an, we're going back to where we were pre-pandemic as it pertains to in-person instruction. That's where we're going. Two things would happen. One, he would take a beating on social media. Two, their enrollment would skyrocket. The number of people that would call trying to get late registered and such would skyrocket. Because people, as, as a parent, I'm asking these questions. I'm asking, so if my kid goes to college and it gets all virtual, what am I paying for? Because I'm not paying for the I'm not paying for the every benefit that you would get normally from an institution of higher learning. I'm just not getting those things. At some point, you have to acknowledge at the university level that you're in business. At some point, as a as an athletics program, you have to acknowledge that you're in business. You can't just continue to leave money resources without uh, dry without dipping into them before you start to get permanently injured. It's enrollment. If you if you if you broach the athletic conversations we're having, frankly, I think donations would go up. I think your constituents because there's there's like you have multiple layers of constituents. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, your constituents are your students, your your, your faculty, your alumni. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you're you're a business. You're a huge business. Yes. You're a multi million dollar nine figure business, whatever you want to call it. That's why you pay money to get the ticket to go in. <laughs> yeah, right. Get fight for your constituents at all levels, at, at, at every single level. I mean, because I've and look, some people are going to say this has this this is a complete false equivalency, and I, and in some ways it is, but I don't think it completely is. I was I was griping to Neil this morning, and this doesn't affect me. It didn't change my day in any way. And I was out. I went for a run this morning. I fully understand why high schools and elementary schools were out of school today. Um, completely. Sure. There was ice in a lot of areas where I didn't necessarily expect it, frankly. I live in the city, and it surprised me. But um, the university was closed today, um, which I guess did impact me because Willie Price was closed too. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. the university was closed. It was fine. I'm all good. Sure. But the university was closed today. And as soon as there was a possibility to just stay closed today, it was, hey, everybody just go virtual, do whatever you're doing. I don't know, limited operations, however that works. I don't know. Um, point being, 
we've used this virtual thing not only as a carrot out there, but as a crutch. Um, there's a difference in something being a tool and it being a crutch. And it's not being a tool right now. It's being a crutch. Whereas if 95% of the faculty, if 95% of the students can get to campus, go to campus, go to class, go to work today. And if you can't, then okay, virtual in. Do whatever it is you would have done elsewhere today. I mean, nobody's going to come check your driveway and go, oh, you could have gotten here, and you're not going to be punished. But why not just open it up and do the normal stuff and then move on? That's that. That's what I don't get is how everything becomes so, instead of figuring out these middle ground solutions that make sense and have a lot of common sense attached to them, it's all or nothing. It's a, If I got 100% can't do you something, just nailed it. then no one can. And if, that, that is what I don't understand in this entire situation. We've gone from majority rule to the 1% rule. If anyone is bothered, you can't do it. If anyone's offended, you can't do it. If anyone gets his or her feelings hurt, you can't do it. That becomes paralyzing after a while. You said it. It's time for some people, frankly, in that particular, in that particular office and in offices like his to start fighting for their constituents. And yes, you're going to get labeled. Hell, it can't get any worse than the start was, right? I mean, where it was awful. Just say it. Say it out loud. We, we need to be open. Because I'm going to tell you, if, if someone told me that, that campuses were going to be virtual again in the fall, I got, I, I've got real reservations after witnessing it as a parent. I have real reservations after witnessing it as a parent. And at some point, you've got to start saying, hey, we're going to open up Vaught-Hemingway in the fall. We're going to open up Jordan-Hare, Bryant-Denny. We're going to open them up. No one's making you go. If you don't feel safe, don't go. But by the time August rolls around and September rolls around, pretty much if you want to be vaccinated, you will have been vaccinated. There was a story in the Wall Street Journal. Oh, I, think even, it, I think even Biden said the other day sometime in July for everybody to be able to get one that wants one. Yet no one will yeah. say publicly, hey, we're going to open up these stadiums this fall. They'll say, well, that's our, that's our hope. That's our hope. No, say it's our plan. We're going to open up the stadiums. We're selling season tickets, as many as we can sell. Well, I mean, it's what, again, back to credit to him, it's the credit to Sankey. He didn't go, hey, we're going to really hope to play. We're going to play. And if something happens where we can or we have to change course, great, then we'll figure that out and we'll move on and we'll, we'll adapt. But we're going to play. We're just going to play. And by God, that's the answer. Okay. And every day we're going to get up and we're going to figure out how to play. The next day we're going to figure out how to play. The next day we're going to figure out how to play. The next day we're going to figure out how to play. And then if there's a day where we got to backtrack, okay, great. But that's not that day's not today, so we're still moving forward. It's it's not it's not overly complicated. Um, and at some point you've got to say that is that no one's putting a gun to your head and making you go to Swayze Field this this spring, for example. No one's going to make you go to a baseball game. And if you choose not to go to a baseball game because you don't feel safe, or if you choose not to go to a baseball game because you would rather do something else, or if you choose not to go to a baseball game because you just don't care, that's, no one, that's fine. All of those explanations are fine. If someone told you, you know what, I, I, I normally would go, but I'm not going to go this season because I just don't feel 100% safe. And there will be some of that. Sure, and your response yeah. to that is, I get it. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Or if someone goes, you know, I'm going to go to the game, but – I'm gonna. I'm. I'm, st I'm still gonna wear a mask. I'm still gonna wear two masks. Whatever. Okay. 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 But we've got to get to a place, and it's my opinion. And if people feel like that, don't penalize them on their tickets or their points or anything like that. No, of no, course. All of good. course. Of course. Delay it to next year. Do whatever the current system is. In the same way that if a player said, "I just don't feel okay. safe this year," okay. Yeah. You don't lose your year of eligibility. Okay. But at some point, you've got to say, "But we can't keep moving the goalpost." Because finances do matter, and towns like Oxford have been hurt. There's businesses, friends who I don't know if they're making it or not. Don't know. And so, but you got to get past that. We, it, like Ole Miss, for example, we'll get, we'll get off baseball for a minute, go to football. The excitement level going into an Ole Miss football season, it's, I've been here for 13 years. The only ones that, that 2009 excitement was off the charts preseason. 14 and 15. 14 and 15. 
You would have that type of deal. Maybe 16, but probably not. But it's in that room. But yeah. Yeah, sure. It's way Top up five. there. Yeah, sure. It doesn't happen every year. No. I think you'd come close to selling out Vault Hemingway every week, if not completely selling out Vault Hemingway every I week. I do too. So if you're going to limit it to 50% or 25% or whatever percent, my question when you say, okay, well, this means that you lost X amount of dollars is why? Why? And I think that's a very fair question about a lot of things. Hey, we're not completely ready to commit to in-person instruction. My answer is, my, my, my question, my follow-up question is, why not? W- give me the explanation. And if it's, well, you know. Just, or even the better, I mean, well, that is, it's two, it's two parts. Though. Sure. The equally question is, okay, so when? Right. Show me, and then at so, least let me know the goalposts, what we're moving toward, and go, okay. If you tell right. me, well, I can't commit to that. So, in other words, there's some metric. Make it a number, not a feeling. There is a me- Bingo. There's a metric that's stopping yeah, sure. you from committing to it. Tell me what that metric is so that I can start watching for that metric. Sure. You know, you tell your kids, you know, as soon as you do X, X, and X, you get your allowance. As soon as you do this and this and this, you get to do this. So they complete those chores, and then they get the reward, sure. right? You 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 can't keep moving. If you keep moving the goalpost, if I tell my kid, all right, here's the deal: you get your you get to go to summer camp at X. You get to go on the ski trip with your buddies once you've done five hundred dollars worth of what chores. Sure. And then Carson gets to five hundred dollars. Gets to four hundred and seventy dollars, and he goes, "Dad, I'm just thirty dollars away." I'm like, okay, well now here's you got to get to a thousand. Then he gets to 964, and he goes, Dad, I'm 36 away. Nope, it's 1,500. At some point, he's going to go, hey, Dad, screw you, man. I'm not, screw it, screw it, I'm done. I'm done with all your crap. I'm not doing any more of it. Kind of there. We've moved these goalposts back and back and back and back, and I'm not convinced that we're ever going, unless people publicly start saying things like, I want to go to the baseball game. When are you going to fight for me? And until some people come out and say, I think it's time that we open up. I mean, Tate Reeves could score a lot of points today by saying, I, 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 you know, Richard, I think you've got a good point. Given where we are metrically, I think we could move to 50% safely. A lot of, but he would take a beating from people all over the country. you got to be willing to absorb that. It's easy for me to sit here and say that. And then once he does it, go to Arkansas goes, okay, well, I'm going to do it too now. Because we're, we're, now we're safety in numbers a little bit. The second guy, and yeah. you, you, we're spreading it out amongst the 17 of us now or whatever we yeah. are, and, and so it's, it's going all the way around. To me, baseball's the perfect sport to start making this noise in because football's around the corner is yeah. what I'm trying to tell people. It's around the corner and ask people, hey, are we 100% confident that we're going to have full stadiums this fall? And the answer is, well, you know, it's just – and it's what you said. You nailed it, Chase. It's we've gone from making decisions based on practicality and metrics to making decisions based on protecting feelings. And if if the goal here is to protect everyone's feelings, it's never happening. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll continue in one second. First, to tell you about Northeast Spark. That is S P A R C, servicing people across rural communities. Two packages: this is the Ignite package, that is 100 uh, Mbps, or the one gig Blaze package, powers the Clark Ford Studio. Your hometown team bringing you world class broadband. NESpark.com, 662-238-3159. Phone service available, as well as parental controls, network security, and more. If it's in your area, it's the place to go for your internet service around oxford so again any spark.com 662-238-3159 podcast also brought to you by pinnacle trust pinnacle's based in madison mississippi they've got clients in more than 20 states advisors in multiple states as well they've been around since 1997 and what they do is they provide detailed specialized investment management financial planning retirement planning for individuals and businesses and much more At Pinnacle Trust, investing is treated like a commodity. Decisions are made using objective information and research, not emotions. So regardless of your level of wealth, Pinnacle Trust is going to sit down with you, listen to your goals, study your expenses, and put forth a comprehensive, detailed financial and retirement plan built just for you. Pintrust.com, P-I-N-N Trust.com. Mention you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the podcast. You'll get 10% off your first year's fees. Also brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis, 
Uh, John is a part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows him to supply his clients with added values, and unique benefits, simply not available to other travelers. What you need to do with John is get in touch with him. Say, hey, here's what I'm thinking about doing this summer. Here's what I'm thinking about uh, doing the holidays. Want to do something in 2022. Want to blow it out. Here's my parameters. Here's a budget. Here's some ideas. And then just sit back. He'll come up with options for you that you will not find on your own. And no, you don't have to live in or near Memphis to take advantage of his services. 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients save $50 off their first booked trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. Also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, Grenada Nissan's the place to go. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Great lease deals as well. GrenadaNissanUSA.com. And we're brought to you by Oxford University Bank, OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. Uh, OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with a personal touch. When you call OUB, you get a live person, no 10 buttons to push, no five minutes to wait. To learn more, go to liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. So, um, yeah, I don't I mean, I guess that's the majority of it. Um, that's got to happen. I mean, we got the last thing on it. The, the, the conversation is what has to start right now. Mm-hmm. Frankly, if you're going to get football. I know. Because it's going to take a minute. I know. you got to run it out. I mean, uh, I know a lot of universities are, are trying to budget off 50%. Well, I mean, even to get there, got to gotta move a little bit. Um, what I don't like, and then I'll shut up about it for today. I'm kind of tired of being completely shut up about it. I kind of fell victim to the, hey, don't talk about this anymore. Well, it's on my mind. It's a big part of what we do. And I, so I, I kind of like doing the baseball thing because people come to me and go, oh, don't be selfish. I'm not being selfish. I've only been to two Ole Miss baseball games in 13 years as a, as a non-media member. It's not impacting me. It's not impacting anybody in my household. It's not like my girls are running off to Oxford Ole Miss baseball games all weekend, every weekend. Mm. It, it's not. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing. I'm saying I, I'm not. It's not me being selfish. This is me looking at the town that I live in, and and people are hurting here. And at some point, you have to start saying, "But why are we giving up fifty percent of our income?" If you're over there running the books at Ole Miss Athletics, you should be saying, but why? Why is it 50%? Why is that 60%? Why not 65%? What do the numbers have to be to go from 50 to 70? From 70 to 85? What, what, what's, the, what's the difference? Because every seat that you don't fill is money. I don't like to – and it's a conversation we have is, you know, I saw in the thread a little bit. Oh, well, the SEC, and you can't say anything. The SEC is not finding or kicking you out because you speak an opinion. Of course not. I mean, come on. Like you, no. At the end of the day, your constituents are your own people. It's not the league. You're a member of the league, and you're a member of the league voluntarily, but there are rules in place. They're not going to – I mean, you don't get your hand slapped over it. I mean, what difference does it make? You're allowed it's, an opinion. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You can speak out publicly and go, no, we think this is horseshit. Well, okay, you know, okay. and, if it, and if that creates more discussion, then That's good. That's good, too. Yeah. If Greg Sankey calls you up and goes, you know what, I wish you wouldn't say anything, my, my question would be why? We're bleeding over here. Why? I mean, what's the financial impact for Ole Miss baseball this weekend? Because if you can only put 2,100, is that what you said? 20, 22. 2,200. Sorry, stand corrected. Yep. 22. If you can only put 2,200 people in the uh, in the stadium – well, what's the difference to that and if you had 12? It's 10,000 and how what's the average ticket? I know there's different tiers and all that stuff, but someone could come up with a a, a rough average. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So let's call that average $40 and I bet that's really low. Yeah. 10,000 times 40 400,000? Yeah. Times 2 Eight, left a million dollars on the table this week. Times double concessions, double anything else. Even more all, shirts and hats and pom poms and the whole deal. And then I'm going to guess that of those ten thousand people that didn't get to go to the game, some of those people would have gone out to eat in Oxford. I'm, I'm just guessing. Would have gone to a bar and bought a beer. Would have filled up their gas tanks at Oxford Exxon and other places. Yeah. 
Maybe we would have stopped in and bought a bottle of wine someplace to take back to a condo or a hotel room. Would have stayed in a hotel room. Would have gone to the coffee shop and gotten a $7 latte. I mean, you can make fun of trickle-down economics all you want to, but they're real. Kenneth, thanks for the uh, super chat earlier. He says, if Ole Miss just opened up, might run Neil's buddy and Sergeant Prof off. You know, I know you're making a joke, but that's kind of the point we were making, is, look, you're going to get killed on social media. And there's going to be people that rip you and do whatever and ever, ever. Okay. At the end of the day, I fail to see where Twitter or social media has done any impactful actual change by itself. It's people freaking out about social media that causes problems. It's not the social media. Twitter is completely unrepresentative of anything in real life whatsoever. But no, by the day, universities, businesses, Fortune 500 companies and CEOs kowtow to it and yes. freak out over social media. And it's it's amazing. It's a disease. And I mean, I don't agree with a something. Well, frankly, I don't know. My point is I don't agree with everything he says, but it's one of the things Clay Travis has been talking about for a year and exactly right is the, the obsession with Twitter and social media and businesses going – Oh my God! Rebel Twelve Bulldog said this. Who gives? It? Well, you you don't want to appear to be. What's the word? If you're not empathetic, <laughs> you don't want to appear to not yeah. be empathetic. Alice, so, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you end up not doing it. I mean. Avery's in the thread. She uses an example. She said, we probably would have come to the series and spent money this weekend. I don't think Avery would mind me saying they have a condo up here. So she and her husband come up for the weekend and Mm -hmm. bring the kids and stay for a weekend. They're probably going to want to eat at some point in a a two-and-a-half-day span, I'm guessing. You know, you're going to have to buy gas. If they want to go out, just the two of them, they got to perhaps pay a babysitter. They got to, you understand my point. There's this impact. Well, you take all that away. They don't come up for the weekend. This that, doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. It just yeah. goes on and on. And at some point, you have to start saying, but, so why? And at what point can we get past this? That's what I liked about Richard's tweet this morning. We bring it full circle. And people say, you can't talk about this. No, I think we have to talk about it. I do. I think it, I think it is a conversation. It, it, it becomes a bigger conversation over the course of this year. Where can you imagine if Ole Miss, let's say, hosted a super regional? You said, hey, just 25%. 2,200. 2,200 people. That's it. What led this to us, and we'll talk about basketball in a second, was I, watched, I made myself watch college basketball some Saturday. I watched a good bit of Kentucky and Tennessee – I watched a good bit of Vanderbilt at Alabama. I watched all of Mississippi State at Ole Miss. The product's the same as it's been in the past few years. College basketballs it's a shaky product at times. It's an inconsistent product because the players are inconsistent and the officiating is consistently horrible. But what you what what elevates what what emphasizes it now is that there's no crowd. There's no noise. It doesn't sound like a college. College athletics in general game. are about atmosphere. Yes. All of them. Yes. To some degree. Well, I mean, listen. We'll go back to baseball for a second. Oh, yeah. Let's say Saturday, Ole Miss is at UCF. They're playing. Yeah. You know, and there's a difference between looking at the packed outfield and stuff because all those early games, you know, you're watching and some kid for Ole Miss hits a home run and the beer showers and the packed crowds and stuff well you take all that away it's an it's an extra man i mean it helps but just from an optic yeah. standpoint from an enjoyable standpoint when you take that away and now, hey. now the ball yeah there's two people out there that throw a beer in the air eh, it's not the same thing you can pretend that it is but it's not it's not the same atmosphere you see players act differently there's players that feed off environments that don't play as well when they're not when they're not in front of them i've heard some major leaguers say that yeah just can't i mean one of, one of my very favorite players is a guy that feeds off crowds, off emotion, Javi Baez. Well, there were no crowds. There was no emotion. He had to generate it day in and day out, and he wasn't the same player. Now, is that at the end of the day on him? Sure. He's a professional. But you're telling me there aren't college kids who play better when there's a crowd? Mm-hmm. I mean, Ole Miss kind of had a hard time answering the bell on Saturday for a number of reasons. The like a crowd's part uh, of it. But a, a crowd may have – Woken them up. It makes it easier for every road team in every sport. Sure. Period. 
Well, I mean, I watched Kentucky win at Tennessee. I watched State win at Ole Miss. Um, I don't know the metrics on home road splits, but I bet more road teams are winning right now than usual. Yeah, Alabama couldn't put Vanderbilt away in Tuscaloosa. There was nobody there. On a day, you and I talked about Alabama as an example. They, yeah. On a day where they went senior day, they went 13-1 and one in the league at this point. And they were pretty lethargic. Yeah, And they were they had a hard time Go. going. They were like a car stuck in third gear. It worked, but it wasn't exactly operating at optimal efficiency, and the crowd never got jumped. There was a point in the second half where they went on a run, and I think had it been a normal day where Coleman's packed or whatever, and that kind of a deal, I think Vanderbilt wilts. And it would have looked and felt more like a college basketball game. But it didn't. Ole Miss probably not, well, definitely not starting on time as uh, Mississippi State and Texas Tech are currently in the top of the seventh. Five five in uh in that one right now. State has a runner on second with one out. Anyone not following in our uh, in our in, in our stream. But anyway. Yeah, so Ole Miss isn't getting started on time. It's gonna be a minute. It's the one thing about college baseball that for me people say what, what? I don't know why though exactly. Like it's it's hard to pinpoint why it's worse than well, the other sports. I watched a couple of innings yesterday and I was asking myself that. I was actually watching the inning where Gonzalez hit the home run. Yeah. And that inning even though there was action in that inning, it was just kind of like, okay. The pitchers are slower, and they've got that nice clock out there that they never actually do anything with. You have to – look, for a clock to be effective, you have to punish the guy when yeah. the clock runs out. Yeah. Instead, he just kind of looks at it and goes, all right, fine, whatever, and yeah. I'm going to move on with my the day. The college pitchers just keep hitting the snooze button. Yeah, there the is the, like, it's out there and hits zero, and I go, well, uh, all right. It. Yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. It, 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 and the replays, because the umpires are – I apologize to the SEC. You do not have the worst umpires in the country. You might have the best because the Big 12 officials, umpires, my God. I mean, just not even knowing the rules half the time. It it, it was it was strange. But you got to, as a sport, I think, and I like baseball, So, I, and I understand baseball is a different kind of game and sure. everything can't be timed, and that's one of the beauties of it. Yeah. But – it doesn't deal eight and a half when hours. When games are either. lasting four hours a game, four hours is too long. It's not 14 12 either. I mean, like. I know. That was a five to four game that went four hours and change. Yeah. I'll give you an example. On Saturday, Ole Miss baseball started at 3 30. Ole Miss basketball started at five. And the basketball game was over, and Kermit's Zoom call was done when the Ole Miss baseball game ended. Yeah. That's too long. And you can love it and all of that stuff, and yet you can still – you have to be able to go that – but if you want the sport to grow and you want the sport to become more easily I – mean, I guarantee you there are people that looked at the length of these games and said, I'm glad we didn't pick that up. you got to be able to make it move faster than it's moving for the sport to grow from a TV standpoint. It gets a little better as the year moves on because pitchers are sharper. They're throwing more balls. Right. Early in the year, right. that's some of it. And now the umpires were squeezing yesterday too, or all weekend. There's and I'd give you that. If there's it was, a little if it of was that. Three and a half. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. But it, when it's four fifteen, and I can't, like I said, I can't really figure out why. Except I think you're right. I think it's well, it's a couple of different things. There, there's actually a few dynamics here. League play is quicker too because you have the um, uh, the headsets for the catchers, mm -hmm. so the pitches come in immediately. Right now, because catchers don't call their own games. Okay, I'm going to get set down. I'm going to look over to the look thing. Over. I'm going to come go back. All the signs, it, it's it's relay the every signs. single pitch yeah. is twice as long as it would be if the catcher just went. Okay, fastball away. Here we go. Let's move. Yeah, there's fix, a lot of that. They need to fix some of that. Um, that plays a role in it. The pitchers just take longer. They worry about runners too much. There's a lot of hey, let me pick and do all this stuff. Um, the 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 replays have hurt significantly because they take so long mm -hmm. because. You've got to go out to the – you've got to go meet as a conference and then decide, are we going to decide ourselves it needs to be a replay or are we going to take one from the coach that he gets for this to be a replay? And then we're going to go to the thing and then we're going to come back and we're going to meet again and tell the other guys and then we're going to spread. Well, suddenly it's a nine-minute replay and you're going – Are there unlimited challenges? Coaches get two apiece. And then the officials, though, again, can decide it's a worthy challenge without taking one from them. Oh. So – See, I like the deal of you get – you get – one challenge, and if you get it right, you get another challenge. I have no problem with that. But if you challenge something and it turns out it was right on the field, you're out of challenges. Oh, immediately. Done. That's the way I like that rule. Yeah, no, it was um, it was Salmon's in the outfield. Yeah, it, it – um, 
No, it's it's every coach gets two, but then they go together and then tell the coach whether they're taking it from him or they're just deciding that they might have been wrong themselves um, at that point. Then the pitcher's got to warm up again. And I did love up. how all the COVID rules were merely suggestions. They were not actually things we're going to do on the field. There was no towel in the back pockets. We're licking and blowing on everything imaginable. Um the coaches aren't supposed to approach the umpires yet. Mike didn't get that oh, memo. He's no. walking out there nonstop. Like it's it's yeah, it's, it's whatever. No, it's, come on, it's, it's, that's it's, what I mean. <laughs> it's all of it. I mean, it's at some point some of it is ridiculous. Just play, just play. Where do you fall? I'm gonna, we're, we're, we're going to move on in a second. Where do you fall on the? If you lean into a pitch, it's a strike, and no matter what the count is. Is it too punitive for the hitter, or are you okay with it? If you lean into it, if you don't get out, if you lean into the pitch, it's a strike. And if you already had two strikes, you're out. It's a it's a third strike that can end in a bat at bat even. Well, it's got to be the way baseball is. Everything has to be accounted for. So I don't like it being a no pitch because the pitch was thrown. Yeah, that's not fair. A pitch was thrown. Yeah. So there had to be a result to that pitch. So you, but I guess my point is if the if the ball is clearly in the batter's box, but the pitcher the batter still leaned into it. It's well, still a like strike. That. If the only no no, if you're in the batter's box and the pitch comes at you and you don't do enough to get out of the way, I yeah. think it's an H- HBP. I think you should be able to go down to first base. Yeah, if there's any the way the rule technically in the books is read is it doesn't really matter where you are if you do any movement toward the plate and get hit, you lean into the pitch. No, I don't like that. It doesn't have to be that the pitch was a strike and the, you lean. The into only it. way that I think a hitter should be punished for getting hit is if he leans into the strike zone to right. get hit. Not even over the box, but in the zone. If if the pitch is a ball and it's in the batter's box and it hits you, I mean, sometimes the ball's coming at you and you just react wrong. Yeah, sure. And they don't get you on the on the, on the the roll, but any lower body movement I'm for sure that. is is a... I'm for that. Because um, to get hit in your lower body, you pretty much have to lean into it. Well, because, I mean, Gene Wood, the kid for TCU on, on Saturday, he, he took a knee and definitely he, – he tried to disguise it as rolling, but that knee went six to eight inches toward the plate. Yeah, that's, I don't have a problem as with that. He was, as he was moving. Yeah, I don't have um, a problem with that. But it's, it's, it's a little interesting and different because it happened both days in a row. Mike had to challenge it both days, but he was right. Um, but even with two strikes, it will end in a bad and you're, you're ruled out if it's the third strike on it. That's the only kind of interesting part of it. But nonetheless, we'll move on in one second. First, tell you about Tyson Drugs and G and M Pharmacy. G and M there on South Lamar in Oxford, 662-236-2222. Tyson Drugs on the Square in Holly Springs. Deliver deliver locally in the Oxford area. They'll from MedSync to fill your prescriptions the same day each month and take care of you, whether it's one delivery or one time of stopping in the pharmacy. They are your spot for any pharmaceutical needs. Again, in Oxford, 662-236-2222. I'll have a mailbag up on Wednesday. It's brought to you by Whitney McNutt, Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors, serving you for all your real estate needs in Oxford and Tupelo. She sells condos, land, commercial, and residential family homes. You can reach her at 662-567-2573 or 662-842-3844. Also brought to you by Bain Moss and Bowen, located in historic downtown Corinth, their firm, Practices a wider range of law from DUI defense to car wrecks to representing government entities. It's the only firm in Mississippi made up of a sitting state legislator, a former assistant district attorney, and a former circuit court judge. Their experience is unmatched in that regard, and you can tap into it by visiting them at 618 East Waldron Street in Corinth or by calling them at 662-287-1620. Also brought to you by Alpha Specialties, located at 1670 Highway 80 in Pearl, Mississippi, it's your trailer-specific professional. If you want to haul it, they can call it. Alpha is the premium trailer dealership in Mississippi. They've got Load Trail, which is the premium brand trailer, the highest quality utility equipment dump and gooseneck trailer being built today. Uh, they also have Hallmark Cargo Trailers, one of the most quality cargo trailers on the market, perfect for hauling goods to markets and shows, ATVs to deer camps, hauling race cars, and uh, much more. For podcast listeners, they have spare tires and wheels starting at just $100. Uh, a full selection of trailer parts and accessories, hitches, winches, straps, and more. They also do all types of truck accessories. And uh, you can get 10% off a yearly trailer service and inspection at Alpha's Full Service Shop. 601-932-9798 or alphaofms.com. And we're brought to you by Blue Delta Jeans. Blue Delta Jeans makes the best fitting, most comfortable jeans in the world because they are uniquely made for you and only you. Raw denim jeans, 
Custom fit and hand tailored in Tupelo, Mississippi. One size fits one at BlueDeltaJeans.com. They've been advertising with us for the past two years. We've always directed you to DM them to set up a time to get measured. So now whether you're coming to Oxford or not, you can visit BlueDeltaJeans.com to get measured by their new virtual tailor and design your very own jeans. And just for our podcast listeners, enter the discount code REBELGROVE, all lowercase, at checkout and get 10% off your order. And we're brought to you by The Rogue. The Rogue is your destination for fine men's clothing. Their stylist hand-select pieces from top designers. From work to lifestyle to nightlife, there's the perfect something for everyone at The Rogue. All the best items from Peter Millar, Duckhead, Martin Dingman, Jack Victor, Halsey, True Grit, and more. 4450 I-55 North in Jackson or at therogue.com. Yeah, I've seen several comments there in the thread. Look, both the announcers on this Flow Sports thing are terrible. They're but they're both awful. Yeah. But the it's the play by play guy that is causing the problems because the analyst, who's apparently a former professional player, I don't know who the hell it is, but he tries to just not completely tell the other guy he's an idiot and tries to fix it some. Like when he had Kevin Graham playing for Texas Tech. He did well, there's a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. LaFleur was at bat like six times in one inning. Uh, but Well he had he kept saying Hit to the left fielder, Graham. And I was like, no, I don't think that's who that is. I don't even know anything about it, and I'm pretty sure that's not that's not right. Yeah, so one of them is just terrible, and then the other guy is bad but realizes he's stuck in a booth with terrible for 11 hours. Yeah. So there's a, there's a weird deal there. It's way too expensive, but it's expensive because they know the product sucks, and they know you're going to cancel on yeah. Tuesday. That's yeah. why it's expensive. Yeah. You know, and again, I mean, whatever. It, it, it is what it is. I The first day, I completely listened. Yesterday, I kind of muted and was like, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm good. The only thing that I got out of the two days from an announcer standpoint was I did not know Jason Grimsley's daughter goes to Ole Miss and dates Justin Bench. Oh. That's the only thing that I – That's crazy. And if you had told Justin Grimsley that his, <laughs> his daughter would one day date Johnny, Johnny Bench's Bins. kid – Son of a gun. Well, I, you know, you know, and I, I did not remember Grimsley's whole story because my first thought, because of what we do, is, hey, podcast guest, okay. And then I read when I started reading, I was like, oh, never mind. There's a lot of PD in there that we're probably is not going to want to talk about. I mean, he's he's maybe top three poster child for the the steroid era with some of the stuff that's in his deal. Oh, Grimsley. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh, his wow. career is inundated with with steroid stuff. He um he started taking in '98. He made a million dollars prior to steroids and nine million dollars after steroids. Uh, um, oh. He was in several of the big reports with like the the the, the dudes. So yeah, he's 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 in that realm there. Um, yeah, bottom seven now, five five still with the uh, the Bulldogs. They started at ten thirty. Surely that's not right. Surely they went ahead to eleven. Come early. on. <laughs> I mean, you got to Somebody's got to call. <laughs> There's a hand raised guy that goes, guys, this is this is not good. Something's gotta change. You gotta move. You gotta, on gotta move faster good. than this. <laughs> I mean, you can't have you cannot consistently have every game go four hours plus. It, I it, mean, it, five runs on six hits, five runs on five hits. Nothing Are they walking the hell out of people? Hold on. That's part of it is every I mean, it seemed like every hitter in that game yesterday that I watched went to a full count. Four walks and eight walks. That's a lot of walks. Yeah. State has walked eight. Red Raiders. That's a lot of walks in seven innings. Texas Tech kind of needs to win a baseball game. They, they, they probably do. Feel a little bit better about themselves. I mean, it'd, it'd be all right. We got time. It's so it's, 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 it's Ole Miss, Texas, and then Arkansas, TCU, TCU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. TCU's one and one. Arkansas's two and zero. Oh, Ole Miss is two and zero. Oh, Texas is zero oh and two. Um, so, Tech is zero oh and two. State's one and one. Gotcha. Yeah, that is correct. It is currently five to one SEC through two days. And that was skin of teeth. Probably a sign of some things to come. Yeah. The, well, the Big 12 as a conference went 0-7 on opening day. SEC's good. They're very deep. Yeah, There's deep, a lot of – Deep league. Uh, some, people, some people have asked me. I have no idea whether Ole Miss and State are flying back together or not. Um, I would assume they could just charter a flight from Dallas and both head to where they need to go at this point. I don't know I would, why you would I go would back to so. Birmingham. Because they took their buses elsewhere. It's not like they stayed there. So Right. The buses aren't sitting at the airport in Birmingham. <laughs> no, no, no. Because that would suck. It is one of the, my favorite, like, hey, if somebody had told you this, you this a year ago before the pandemic and you didn't get it, was Ole Miss did a video with Peyton Chatney And it's like, hey, opening day, they're getting on the plane. And he did the video in front of the state bus on the tarmac. And everybody's going, okay, well, this is really, really weird. But that's where that was, uh, that was, uh, that was headed. 
looks like a short day for uh, Kumar Rocker. He's already out of the game, unless he's already pitched. I just pulled up Vanderbilt stuff because I was kind of curious. They finally started today. Only uh, only four innings for Kumar today. Heavy pitch count for Mr. Rocker. I'm going to guess they're protecting that arm. They are beating Wright State 5 to nothing, and they got him out of the game and said that's going to be enough. We'll move on. I'm going to venture to guess they're going to play bigger games down the road. He uh, He struck out eight in four innings. Yep. Pitch count was elevated a little bit. He threw sixty-seven pitches. I said, yeah. nope, that's that's, that's it. plenty. Yeah, they're gonna play bigger games. They're gonna do. The they're gonna do the same thing with Jack Leiter tomorrow too. Yeah, sure, they should. Actually, later today, they're playing a double header today, and uh, and go from there. So, nonetheless, uh, we'll also do a basketball show tomorrow. We got a pretty good bit still going on with that. I'll miss us play tomorrow night against Missouri at eight o'clock. Um, I saw you did your numbers. I'd already kind of tagged that anyway. The whole. If you have 100 points for your fan chips, mm-hmm. um, you went very heavy, as expected, on the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, I said 89-10-1. That's, about, that's literally about right. Is that about right? Yeah. I did tell Carson today the Thunder beat the Cavs last night, and I told Carson they're winning a little too much. The goal is to get a top four pick, not the seventh pick. They need a lot of ping pong balls. Yeah, they need to lose. The Thunder's problem is that one of their players is emerging as a superstar and two or three of their other players are playing too well. Like, for example, right now Al Horford is hurting the Thunder because he's good. He found a little new energy. For whatever reason, guys show up in that locale and rejuvenate their careers. Chris Paul's having an all-star season in Phoenix. Totally totally re-energized. Thunder need to move Al Horford. What's your guess today? Lakers, Nets? Uh, no, I'm I'm all in on the Jazz right now. Are you? I've okay. been watching them for a while. They're really, really good. They defend what they defend in a way that would I think scare the Lakers. And the Anthony Davis thing's a little scary if I'm a Laker fan. Yeah, that's fair. You know, when you start talking about Achilles coming off of a long season, mm-hmm. they were they won the title what in October? Didn't have a lot of time to recover. And then, boom, here you go again. I mean, they're still the threat. They're still the one team you don't want to play because LeBron James plays for them, and he's he can beat you by himself. But the Jazz are playing at a really high level. And on the other side, it's Nets. Nets look really good. I still wonder about their defense. It's Nets, Sixers, Bucks, probably. That's probably it. That's all? Yeah. That's probably it. Mike Conley's having a rejuvenation of his career right now. Oh, is he really? Yeah. he's. I don't know whether he sh- will make the all-star team, but he absolutely should. Timberwolves fire their coach, Saunders. They already hired a new guy. Well, I hope the new guy works better because they need to start winning. <laughs> you need them to win a game or two. <laughs> they're awful. They're like 7-24 and 24 or something crazy. They're, they're, they're <laughs> atrocious. They're as bad as I was hoping the Thunder would be. Uh-oh. Uh, I was trying an early line, but I can't find one. We'll talk about basketball tomorrow because I just can't get it. Seem to come I'm up. I'm going to so. guess Missouri's like a three and a half point favorite. I think it's that low. Yeah. Okay. Almost beat them by twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Six bids in the SEC. Is that one too high? I think it's. I think it's six. Yeah. Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Arkansas, LSU, Missouri. Yeah. Probably it. I would think that's because there's really no bubble team because Ole Miss is falling off. State's not there. Auburn's out there. Can't get in anyway. Yeah, I mean it's hard to even call Ole Miss a bubble team today with a net of sixty. Right. That's not particularly bubblish. No, that's nowhere in there. So they got no one to blame but themselves. No, they did it. It was right there, even with some other stuff happening in the day and all all over the country at that point. Oh, everything that they would have wanted to happen was happening. Yeah. Everything. All right, top eight right now, one on, nobody out for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, five to five still in that one. So at least two innings to go, maybe like nine innings. Who knows? They might, they might play like 16 or something. And so we just give there. them both a loss and move on. There's a time limit there, where, there, hey. There has to be a moment where you go, that's it. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Send out your one dude, five swings, home run derby right here. Yeah, where, we started where, 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 at 1030, guys. <laughs> Literally, I'd be like, oh, we're playing one extra inning, and after that, we're having a home run derby or something. Doing something. I wonder if they're doing the international rule thing where you put the guy at second. I would hope so. 
Load them up, bases loaded, one out. And see what Do happens. something to blow the game open and be yeah, done yeah. with it, yeah. All right, baseball coverage, basketball coverage, and more coming your way at rebelgrove.com. Plenty of conversation going on on our crazy message board, so be a part of our community if you would. Subscribe. We'd love you as well as subscribing on YouTube and to the uh, the podcast. If you do subscribe on YouTube, hit the bell so you get the notifications. We don't always start at the same time every day, so you'll be notified as quickly as possible that we are about to uh, hit the go button. So appreciate everybody in the stream. Appreciate everybody listening in all the places that you do that. And we will talk to you again tomorrow. Take care.